All right, um, there's going to be a bit of code involved that will be on the screen. So if you're like way on the edges, it might be a little bit tricky. So I would encourage you to scoot towards the middle so that you can see what I'm talking about, not just hear me talking about it. All right, so um, building extensible themes with actions and filters. So I've been building WordPress themes for probably about eight years now, and uh, actions and filters weren't even really around when I started, at least not, um, they weren't popular. So um, the theme of this, get my mouse out of the way here. The theme of this WordCamp is the impact of WordPress. So a lot of people were talking about the like direct impact you can have with WordPress, either the impact that it can have for you, the impact you can make in the world um, by using WordPress, say for nonprofits or things like that. Um, this talk's a little bit different. Um, when I think of the impact that I can make with my life, it isn't usually related to writing code. However, working with WordPress has, what has allowed me to do different things like travel. Um, I've volunteered on doing, vol I've done volunteer work on three different continents, not including this one. And all of that is because I was working with WordPress and could take that with me. Um, so this is more of a, hey, how can you get your work done quicker and more efficiently so you can make an impact with your life outside of writing code. Um, so there's a few common theme structures, um, both with their advantages and disadvantages. Um, and I'll go through those before proposing an alternative. Um, so the most common method of structuring themes is what the default themes use. It's mostly HTML with a little bit of PHP thrown in, some template tags. Um, it's pretty easy to learn. Um, if you know HTML, most of it makes sense. And it's pretty quick to get started with. And uh, you can move along. However, it's a little bit clumsy if you start to do a lot of things that are more complicated or involved. So for example, we have, say, the primary div, main div, and then it's repeated in the page.php file. So there's a lot of just repeated code, which is fine if you're building something once. But the more template files you have, the more repeated code you have. And if you want to add something, you have to add it in so many different places. You're copying and pasting, and if you mess something up, finding which file you messed it up in, yeah, it just gets to be more complicated than it needs to be. Um, also, if you want to insert something into here from a plugin, good luck. On the other hand, you have frameworks, which solve that problem um, by completely abstracting the entire theming process and allowing you to do amazing things if you know how to do them. Um, so here we have the index.php file of the Genesis theme framework. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Genesis theme framework. And whenever someone comes to me and is like, hey, I need to get a theme for my site, I send them to StudioPress because I trust their code. And I've worked with Genesis quite a bit. And I love it. So this is not a knock on Genesis at all. Um, but as you can see, if you open the index.php file, you just get a note that says, hey, don't edit this file, and then a call to the Genesis function. So if you're trying to do something, you're like, OK, now what? Um, I'm, on, I'm not supposed to edit this. What do I do? Um, thankfully, they have some decent documentation, and uh, so you can go that route. But nothing is where you would expect it as a theme developer. So. I'm proposing an extensible alternative, a sort of a middle ground between those two extremes. Um, I want the flexibility and extensibility of something like Genesis, but I want to be able to open a theme, open the file that I would assume the code would be in, and I want 
either A, the code to be there, or B, to be able to look at what's there and be able to easily tell where the code lives. So, oh, yep, so here are the advantages. Um, the code is where you expect it, like I just mentioned. Um, the code uses WordPress conventions, so you don't need to learn a whole new um, process and is extensible. So you can, either from a child theme, from a plugin, basically from anywhere you want, you can extend what's already there. So not a lot of copying and pasting, not a lot of hunting. All right, for those of you who this is new, um, first I want to explain what an action hook is, I'll explain what a filter hook is, and then I'll show how I've been using them. So an action hook is simply a place in the code where you can insert your own code from another location. So for example, if you see this do action example hook, you know, hey, I can hook my own functions in there from anywhere. So here we have another a function that just echoes hello world. We add action, the example hook, so same as there, our hello world, the name of our function, so, and then the priority, which is not required. Um, so anytime this action hook runs, anything that's attached to it with add action also runs. So in this case, this action would run and it would spit out hello world. Um, hopefully that's a concept you're familiar with. If not, that's sort of how it works. Um, a filter hook is very similar to an action hook, except that it passes a value to your function. So that way you can modify something that already exists. You don't just hook your own function and it has to come up with its own output. It can modify something. So maybe it's a string, like in this case, um, we have the string hello world. Maybe it's a variable. It could be an array. It could be all sorts of things, but it lets you manipulate that before um, passing it on. So here we hook our modify hello world function to the example filter that we have up here. And we just return the value with an exclamation point. So it output hello world exclamation point. Um, so that's how um, actions and filters work. Um, and there's so many different ways to use them. So we'll start with um, just in template files and extending template files. So here is um, index.php file. Also, by the way, before like I dig any further into this code, all of this um, code is available on GitHub. Um, there will be a link at the end, but it's part of a theme that I put together just for this talk. It's called Portland. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, you, so it's on GitHub. You can download it, play around with it. You can send me pull requests. Um, anyway, I'm happy to interact with you online afterwards about it. Like, I'm really, I love developer feedback on like, is this helpful for you? Is this, how could it be improved? Um, I spent most of last month, like every day I was like spending multiple hours like trying to solve this problem for myself. And I th I'm hoping that it's helpful for other people um, because it was something that I kept running into year after year after year. Like I would start a project and be like, okay, like, I either have to choose between learning a new framework or like investing a lot of time in that or copying and pasting a lot and just so over and over. So last month I just spent a lot of time like trying to think through this and come up with a way that I could find a middle ground there. So in the index.php file, obviously you'll recognize get header. Um, and then after that we have a lot of do action calls. So just a lot of hooks running. Um, then you have the loop, which you'd have in pretty much any theme. Um, get template part, which we have, we filter our call to get template part so that we can override it later if we want to. Um, but I can get into that a little further on. So basically it's a bunch of do action calls in a loop. Um, so that is the actually bottom part of the index.php file. At the top, we add actions to those hooks. 
Um, so it may sound a little counterintuitive at first because we're taking a little bit longer process to get to outputting the theme, but it will give us a lot more flexibility as we move on. So we're adding three actions to content top, three actions to content bottom, um, and then we're running this function attached to the first action call here. So we attach all those here. If this part doesn't make sense, that's a, it doesn't really matter, but that allows us to set priorities of things later and override that. Um, and then we have the functions there that we're adding. So we're opening a content div. We're displaying an archive title. If it's an archive page, opening a loop div, closing loop div, um, paginate, pagination, and so on. So here's the entire file. And this is a, uh, basically a template for how all the files will work. At the very top, you'll see what's being attached. Then you'll see the functions themselves. And then at the bottom, it will run all the actions. So that way there's a consistent, across all your files, you can open it up, you know what's happening. Here's, here are all the things being attached. Here's the functions. And then here are the filters. Or, sorry, the running the actions and the filters at the bottom. Um, there's the index.php on the front end. Um, so here we have the page.php file. So instead of re-running all the code before, we don't have to copy and paste. Um, the page.php file has, it adds an action, which displays the feature Im featured image, adds a filter, which tells it which template part to use. And then we have the function that adds the featured image. We're using the default template part, so we just return a blank string, and then we load the index.php file. So only the things that are different about page.php are defined here. Everything else is already loaded in the index.php file, so it naturally extends, so you don't have to copy and paste your co old code into your new file. <clears throat> and you can do this again. Here's how it looks on the front end. So it's the same with a featured image. Single.php. Once again, we're adding a featured image. Um, here we're adding the um, single. So now instead of looking for the default template part, it's looking for a template part with single in the uh, so, but I guess I should have explained. By default, it loads a template file called content.php. Um, here we're filtering it so it loads one called content-single.php. So we're just changing the template part and then once again loading index.php on the front end. Similar. Um, notice because it's the uh, content single.php template part. We have comments. It goes off the bottom of the screen. You can't see them. Um, we can also use this to create template files for, say, image attachments. So WordPress will automatically load image.php to display an image attachment. And this is a often neglected part of building themes, which you end up on a site and you're like, this doesn't really look like it's supposed to be like this, but anyway, so we can use it to create an image.php file. Once again, we're here we're adding a filter for the content, um, which is just getting the image, adding an action to um, Add post navigation, which will add a link back to the main to the post that the image at is attached to. And here we're extending page.php instead of index.php because we want it to display as a page. 
So there's a picture of trees at the Portland Zoo, a link back to the page it's attached to. So you could extend indefinitely. You, I mean, I'm sure you'd end up in, with a performance issue if you extended indefinitely, but <clears throat> that it keeps you from having to copy and paste code all the time. Every time you create a new template file, all you have to do is add whatever um, like content blocks are specific to that template, and everything else extends off of what you already built. Um, you can also remove actions. I don't have an example of that here, but if you are extending a template that has something that you don't want, you can just, with the same sort of code that you add an action, you can remove an action that was previously added. All right, so actions and filters can be used for more than just um, extending templates. Here, um, I'll show you how I've been using it to uh, manipulate settings for the theme. So, for example, um, when you show a post thumbnail, you can pass it a, um, a string that will tell it what size to use. So, instead of putting the size in directly, right here, we have a filter. So, by default, it has a blank string which will load the default thumbnail size. <clears throat> now, in well, you could put it in your functions.php file. In the case of this theme, it's in a settings.php file. There is a function that filters this, and it allows us to manipulate the size of the thumbnails across the theme. So, for example, if it's a single page, we use the large size. If it's um, so a single post. If it's a page, we use the medium. And you could do this for all sorts of things. If you had a particular category that you want to display a large banner image, at the top of any post in that category, you could do that without having to create a new category file. You can just filter the one size. So, for example, on a page, we have medium size. It doesn't look good, but it's an example. <laughs> um, so, that allows you in one place to control the size of your images across the entire site. Um, you can do the same thing with page layout settings. So, this is a little. This one's a little more complicated than the image sizes because there's more things involved. So we'll start with uh, the body class. Many of you are familiar. This is a default filter in WordPress, and it allows you to add classes to the body tag. Now, the body tag. <coughs> um, it has a bunch of default classes, and you can add more. So you can specify. Well, all sorts of things. In this case, we're going to go with the page layout. So here we're adding um, the page layout, which we're getting from this function. We're adding it to the layout class. Um, so this function right here is what's going to set across the theme the page layout. So this, uh, this function is much like the last one, where we were setting the image sizes. Here, we're setting the page layout. So by default, as you've noticed from all of the slides up to this point, it's been content on the left with a sidebar on the right. Um, but say, for example, on pages, we can override that and display content only, so no sidebar. Um, on attachment pages uh, for images, because we're going to want to display them as large as possible, we'll put content full width. Um, but if it's an attachment page that's not an image, we'll just go back to content only. And uh, we apply filter this filter here at the end so we can change this from other places. Um, here's just the simple CSS really quick. So if the body class is content sidebar, which is the default, then the primary column it has a width of 60 floated to the left. <coughs> Um, secondary column, width of 30, floated to the right, so on. If it's flipped with sidebar first, it's floated the opposite direction. Content only is centered. So because on for pages, we had set it to content only, you see the sidebar is removed, and we've centered the uh, page. 
Um, here is where it also gets interesting. So by default, the sidebar.php file would display the sidebar on every page because sidebar.php gets automatically loaded by the template. However, notice at the top, we're getting the layout, putting it in a variable, and then before we display the sidebar, we check A, is the sidebar active, and B, does our layout include the word sidebar in it. So it's going back and getting the, um, the layout that we set previously and checking, hey, are we actually supposed to display a sidebar in this layout? If we are, continue. Um, you can, because yeah, sidebar happens in this string more than zero times, so if it happens at least once. Now you could do this with multiple sidebars. So say you have a site with two sidebars, one on each side. Um, so then in your setting, you would set it as sidebar content sidebar. And here, before you display your second sidebar, you'd say, hey, does the word sidebar appear in the page layout more than once? So that way you're <coughs> not only setting this for your CSS to take advantage of it, to say, hey, what's the page layout? It also sets it for your sidebar so they know automatically whether or not to display or hide. This can also be used with page templates. So creating a page template for one of these uh, page layouts is extremely simple. So once again, at the top, we're adding a filter. All it's doing is saying, hey, return the um, page, la page layout that we want to use and load page.php. So with four lines of code, not counting spaces and comments, you can create a page, a new page template that takes advantage of this whole system that we've built up until now. Um, this is the point at which I think I got extra excited about this method when I was like, okay, now I have to go back and build page templates for all of these things that I built for these page layouts. And then I started building it and I was like, wait, that took me like no code at all and no time at all. <laughs> and so and that's when I was like, wait, I think I like this. There's the full width page template in action. And that is what I've been working on. And that's what I would love to hear from you guys. Like, if you guys have suggestions of ways to improve this, I would love to hear from you. If you have, yeah, any, any feedback, like, I love talking with other developers about what they're working on, what problems they're trying to solve, all those kinds of things. So. Um, yeah, let me know. Find me online. You can find me at Theme Foundation. There's a contact form. Um, here's the URL to get the, uh, all this code. It should be a fully like working theme that you can build off of and play around with. And uh, my name's Alex Mansfield. That's also my Twitter handle. So you can f find me on Twitter and uh, get a hold of me that way. Um, do any of you guys have any questions about any of this, how this works, what problems it's solving, anything. Go for it. Um, no, I've had a little bit ex of experience working with object-oriented patterns, but using it in themes is tricky. Um, I know, I've talked to other developers who have gone down that route and come back. <laughs> and been like, uh, it was ideal in theory, but in practice it gets really, really complicated and tricky and you end up, I don't know, there's, yeah, I've talked to people that were like excited about it and then I talked to them later and they're like, mm, yeah, I didn't end up doing that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, the question was, have I tried um, building themes with, say, AngularJS and the, AP, the new API? And no, uh, for a couple reasons. One, um, I was already 
deep into this. And two, um, I'm definitely more of a PHP programmer than a JavaScript programmer. Now, I hope to change that over the course of the next few years, but I, w I do want to play around with that because I think that you can do some crazy and amazing things there. I just haven't been there yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But yeah, that's it's a fascinating idea, and I know, yeah, super fast, and I know that there's people that are working on that kind of thing, and it's super fascinating to me. I'm just not enough of a JavaScript developer yet. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, the, the question was, uh, step back and explain where hooks are found in the core code. Um, the hooks, there's hooks all over in the core code, and um, there is, I believe, a page, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a page in the codex listing, I don't know if it lists every single one, that would be a super long list, does it list every single one? Okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of them. They're all over. They're, um, what's that? Yeah. Um, all the ones that I was working for here, except for the content filter, um, were not in core code. They're in the theme that I built. So in the index.php file that I showed you at the very beginning, let's see, I can go back to here. Um, So all, all of the ones that I was showing, with the exception of one, go back to these hooks in the index.php file. But there are also hooks all over in core. So for example, when, it, uh, when you print the title of a post, you can filter that before it actually gets displayed. So it'll grab the title from the database. So for example, say you want an exclamation point at the end of every single one of your posts. Um, you, <laughs> you could filter that before it, like after it grabs it out of the database, you can fil add a filter to the title so it modifies it in whatever way you want before it actually displays it. But yeah, they're, they're all over. <laughs> right, yeah, yes. Yeah, so if, if it start, yeah, if you find do action somewhere in the code or apply filters. Do action means you'll attach a function. It doesn't get anything to start with. It's just your function. Go. Uh, apply filters means it's going to pass your function some sort of data. So like pre-get posts will pass um, basically what's going to happen when you go grab stuff out of the database. So you can manipulate it so it grabs different things than it would have by default. Does that, does that answer your question? All right, go for it. There you go, developer.wordpress.org. There's documentation for every hook and filter. Awesome. Any other questions? Go for it. Um, could you speak to maybe what you see the benefits of uh, using the action filter hooks um, as opposed to maybe doing something similar but using template parts? OK. Uh, the question was, how how does this differ from using template parts, and what advantages um, does it have? So this also uses template parts. So here, um, because using do action calls gets tricky if you're inside the loop, because then you're running an action multiple times. Um, now, it's possible, and I started out doing that, but I backed away from that. So if you actually, if you look at my template parts, they're not made up only of action calls. They have action calls in them, so you can attach things, but it's not only that. Um, so one difference is 
that here you can manipulate, you can add and remove um, what, so if we're adding an action somewhere, we can remove it later. If I say get template part here, it's coming. I can't later be like, oh, I didn't want that template part. So that's probably the biggest difference. But yeah, it's using, it's using filters to determine which template part is loaded for the main content area. So that way later I can be like, oh, actually, I don't want that template part. I want a different one. Yes? Because WordPress is always being updated, mm -hmm. um, and plugins are always being updated, do you build the, this into the child theme? So it would be in the child theme, PHP code, or it's in the basic uh, website as well? Uh, the question was... Yeah. If it's updated, does it get over -written? Right. The question is, um, do you do this in a child theme or in the main theme? And if it gets updated, does it get overwritten? If you do it, if you start editing these files directly, then yes, if you update the theme, your changes will get overwritten. But it's built in such a way that any of, like, any of this can happen from a child theme. So if you're adding an action um, to any of these, you don't have to be doing it from this file. You can be doing it from any file that loads before this. So. Let's say you have, say you want to add an action to one of these from a child theme. So you could say, hey, I want to add an action to this. You can put it in, in the index.php file of the child theme. Well, you'd have to copy it. You could put it in the functions.php of the child theme. Um, you, could, you could say if it's on a page, you could put it in the page.php file of the child theme, and then that would, could extend index.php. So you can extend from a child theme or from. Well, you can move the, can't you move like the index.php file and put the whole thing copy and paste into the child theme? Yes. So the child theme is still in that's where you make your change. Yes. Okay. So yeah, depending on how extensive your changes are, like if you just wanted to add one thing, you could just throw it in functions. If you um, that's the handy thing about extending. Um, if we go to page.php. Okay, so page.php, see, it uses locate template to grab the index.php file and extend it. So if you have page.php, um, if you have index.php in your child theme, even though this is in your parent theme, it will grab this from the child theme. So if you've made changes there, it'll grab it from the child theme. It'll, so it'll always extend. If it has one in the child theme, it'll use that. If not, it falls back to the parent theme. The question is, what happens when the previous developer is unavailable and screwed everything up? Um, two things. A, charge money for the work that you're doing for them. <laughs> or B, tell them to find a different developer. Depending on if it's something that you feel like you can, if it's not something that you feel like, feel comfortable doing, yeah, it's fair to say, hey, look, the person who built this for you built it in a very unusual way that is not something that I'm comfortable working with. That's a fair, like, it's, it's much better to be honest with them and just tell them, hey, look, it's, this is beyond what I'm comfortable dealing with. Um, in that particular case, the case was if you couldn't find where the CSS was coming from, um, I would view source for the page and look for CSS files. So it's it's lo it's loading there somewhere, right. but where? Or maybe not from the site. It might be loading from 
It could be loading from an external site, true. Unlikely, but true. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead. I have not, but I'm curious about that. Um, the question was, does it affect page load speed? Um, I believe, if, even if it does, it's very minuscule. However, I haven't tested it, and my time is up. So if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, corner me somewhere else. And you won't have to corner me. I love talking about this stuff. So uh, thank you, guys. And uh, I hope this is an awesome WordCamp for you.